First of all, congratulations to you guys who are still here working and grinding every day during this boring bear market. And we are going to be the ones that make it, in my opinion. This is exactly the same scenario that happened between 2018 and 2020 in the last crypto bear market. And the returns from just simply paying attention and slowly dollar cost averaging during that time into projects that I believed in was absolutely phenomenal, right? It was incredible. And simply paying attention is what laid down the groundwork for me to make trades like turning $500 into over $100,000. Today, we are going to be talking about how exactly I managed to do that and the lessons that I learned along the way so you can apply that knowledge and that lessons to the next bull market that I do believe is going to come in the future, right? I am not one of those YouTubers sitting here telling you I know exactly what's going to happen because I do not know. Just like in 2019 when I bought Cardano, I didn't know that it was going to go on a monumental run, right? I had no idea. All I had was research and time at my hands. And that's exactly what we have today. Now, this video is going to be filled with as much valuable information as I could possibly squeeze in. And there are going to be 10 points that we go through. And point number eight is actually pretty harsh, guys. So if this point applies to you, I want you to really take a think about how you're acting in this space. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hopefully, I do provide you some value. Here on the channel, we spend time trying to find 100x gems, projects to dollar cost average into over this bear market. And I try to keep you up to date with all of the news that you need to know to be fully up to date. So if you like the sound of that sort of stuff, do me a quick little favor, smash up that subscribe button and tell me down there in the comment section, which crypto is your favorite to dollar cost average into. And let's jump straight into it. Remembering that nothing in my videos is financial advice because I am just a guy sitting in his room. So here we have a Twitter thread that I actually posted recently. So if you guys do want to stay up to date with all of my thoughts of what's going on in the market, come over and follow me on Twitter as well, because of course I can post there much faster than I can post here. The link is down there in my description and do be careful of all of the impersonators. So like I said at the start of the video, I have turned $500 into over 100K in a single trade, but I've also lost 100% of my investment in others. This is the key because no matter what people say, the guys who are talking about this stuff have lost a significant amount of money themselves as well. Even if they don't talk about it, there is a lot of losses that come when you are trying to hunt down these gems. Now, if you haven't been following my channel for a long time, these trades were done plain as day on the channel. It was around two years ago, right? This was the time of the hype and meme coin space. We had coins like SafeMoon. I know that annoys a lot of people and a lot of people call SafeMoon a scam. Whatever you think about it, the money that was made and the money that we made here on the channel together was incredible. SafeMoon, Elon Gate, some of the other meme coins, the dog base coins, all of that sort of stuff were the coins that went crazy. Now, I started to talk about these coins on the channel because I saw something happening on YouTube that I didn't agree with, right? I saw a lot of people coming onto YouTube and talking about the fact that these coins are going to continue to go up. They're going to continue to make people an obscene amount of money. And that's exactly what I knew wouldn't happen because of what happened in 2018, right? In 2018, 2017, early 2017 is when I started to buy crypto. Crypto, right? For the first time. 2018 was the top of the bull market. I thought that crypto only goes up. I made a wild amount of money for me back then. And then I lost all of it in the bear market. We're talking my portfolio went lower than my initial investment in that bear market, right? So I'm watching all these people talk about these hype and meme coins, like they're never going to go down. And I knew at that moment that there was an opportunity here. One, to make a bunch of cash from trading these cryptos. And two, to let everyone know that taking profits is the key to making money in this space. The absolute key. In the stocks and shares, equity, property markets, holding and borrowing against those assets is what makes you a bunch of money. In crypto, for now anyway, it's buying when people are fearful and selling when people are greedy. Now, I saw that people were starting to get greedy. I didn't didn't think that the pinnacle was in yet. So I decided to start buying up these coins. I put a few hundred dollars in a few different coins and it was incredible, right? My plan was always to put this money in and to take the money out and buy some property with it. That's exactly what I did. I bought property with the profits and the rest is history. I managed to sell crypto near the top, buy a bunch of properties and protect my downside. It's been incredible, guys. It's been incredible. And I've taken you guys here on this journey. So if you do want to join the next leg of the journey for the next bull run and during this bear market, again, smash up that like button and I'll stop blabbering on. First of all, what do you think of this picture? I made it in mid-journey. Pretty proud of that. And I have a question for you guys with this. Do you think that 
when you create art in something like Mid Journey in AI, are you the owner of the art? Did you create the art yourself because you gave it the prompt? Or is the art the creation of the AI? It's a very interesting question. I've talked to my friends about that. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Now, let's move on and talk about the 10 essential points I've learned on my journey so far that you need to know for investing and finding the next 100x cryptos. So first of all, don't go all in. Like I said, I only put in a couple of hundred dollars, turned around $500 into over 100k, right? It was actually higher than 100k, but for simple titles, it sounds a little bit better. Don't go all in. Now I could have invested a lot more. I bought Cardano, which did a huge run. I put a couple of thousand dollars into it. I could have put way more into all of them. I do have a little pit in my stomach thinking, what if I just put, you know, loads more into these coins? And yes, it would have made loads of money. And yes, I would have taken the profit. So I know I would have made that money, but but the key here is to not be very emotional. And the fact is, if you can spread your bets around a bunch of different things and you only find, let's say one, that does the 10, 20, 30 to 100X that you're looking for, that makes up for all of the other mistakes, right? All of the ones that didn't do anything, that went to zero. Now, if you went all in on just one of them and that one didn't pay off, you would be at zero at the end of it. So I think it's much safer to have a diversified portfolio and invest into a variety of different crypto assets in different niches and different narratives to mitigate some of that risk associated. Right now, we have different narratives. We have Arbitrum, the whole ecosystem popping off. We have decentralized perpetual exchanges on different platforms such as Arbitrum. We have the new layer two base from Coinbase, I think is gonna be a narrative that people should pay attention to. We have uh, gambling fi, gambling, but in the DeFi space, which a lot of people are talking about. We have a number of different narratives to be paying attention to. So diversifying across those narratives is what I think is going to pay off in the long run. So the second thing here is don't be emotional. We just spoke about that, right? No emotion when it comes to trading. Now, this might be a little bit controversial. I think that Diamond Hands is I think it's total nonsense. If there is a project and the founders are telling you to Diamond Hands, they're using those words. They just want you to hold so the price goes up so they can make more money. That's my opinion, right? There's no need to diamond hands. You don't need to. Buy when the market is fearful and sell when the market is greedy. When everybody is talking about diamond hands, take profits. Take profits, take profits, take profits, take profits. That's exactly what I did and it paid off perfectly. And I tell you right now, I never ever got the top. I sold Solana at $180 and it went all the way up to $300. But I didn't care because I bought Solana lower than $30, right? I didn't time the top, but I sold when the market was greedy. And right now, Solana is $20. So there's the story, right? And that's not even a hype or meme coin. Diamond hands are bullshit. Now, number four, very specific to me, my channel, people that I follow. But the truth is, influencers are normal people. For the most part, they see the same charts, data, and news that you do. The key to using influencers is to help you gather key information faster. Don't let them replace your research. Let them add to it. I think this is key. What I want from this channel is to provide you guys with information, knowledge, insight, research, but also to give you the groundwork so you guys can find your own narratives. So the best thing in my eyes is to pay attention, use influencers to help you with your research. They're basically like little minions who work for you and find all this information out. You can gather it from loads of different sources and then you can take that information and apply it to your own research, right? So that's what I think is the best way. Don't blindly follow influencers. Number five, use Twitter, YouTube, TikTok to identify new and exciting trends, but avoid buying crypto that has already pumped. If you absolutely trust your research, but the coin has already pumped recently, start small and dollar cost average. So dollar cost averaging is key. Dollar cost averaging, buying slowly. If you find a project that is pumped, I do this all the time. I find something that's pumped. I'm like, no, I really like this. The market cap is still something I want to get involved in, but it's already pumped significantly. I'll dip my toes in the water, right? I'll put in, let's say 10% of whatever I wanted to put in. If the price goes up, great. I actually get access to that price appreciation. But if the price goes down, which 90% of the time it does, if it's had a significant pump, then I can put the rest of that money in as it goes down, right? And I can get the benefits from either way, whatever happens. And again, no emotion when you're doing that. Now heading down number seven, don't be a fuckwit. Use cold storage. Simple, simple. You don't need to be explained to that. Get your money off exchanges. There's no reason for it, right? Do not use DeFi projects you don't fully understand. Now, let me tell you a story. Almost a year ago now, sad, sad times. I had a lot of money invested into UST, 
UST, Anchor Protocol, Luna. I had a lot of money in there. I lost 80% of it. Multiple six figures I lost because I had money on Anchor Protocol that I thought I understood. I thought I understood what ha was happening. I thought that it was safe there. I thought it was a good risk management situation. It was not. I lost too much money doing that. I'm sure a lot of you guys lost money as well. And it's not good, right? I put my hands up to say that I didn't fully understand the entirety of the risks that were involved. I didn't understand that there was a risk for it to go to zero, right? Which it did. It went lower than zero. It did, right? So do not invest in DeFi projects that you do not understand. Do not invest in DeFi if you don't understand the basics of how DeFi works. Now, this might seem a little bit harsh, but if you need to ask someone how to buy something on Uniswap or PancakeSwap, any of that, don't buy the token until you understand how to do it, right? It's relatively simple once you know. So do not do these things because it will leave you open up to scams, especially if you don't know the basics, you might connect your wallet to the wrong address and lose the entirety of your bag, right? So don't use DeFi products you don't understand. Please, please. Now, number nine, try to buy low and sell high. Of course, we know that's what I've talked about. Buying in fear, selling in euphoria. And if you have a longer term mindset, this is actually relatively easy to do. If you buy projects you genuinely believe in right now, it doesn't matter if it goes lower because what are we going to do? We're going to DCA. And then once it starts to pump and the market gets euphoric, you slowly start to take profits out of that. Once this goes into the green, take some profits. If it keeps going up, take a little bit more. Keeps going up, take a little bit more. The percentage amount that you take is up to you. You could give it 10% the second it hits greed, then another 10% when it hits euphoria, that sort of stuff. You can decide this for yourself, but buying in fear, selling in euphoria. And finally, get your crypto off centralized exchanges. All right. I know that's not going to help you find a 100x gem, but getting your money off the centralized exchanges will stop you from losing 100x of your money, right? Because that's what happened to anyone who had money on FTX. That's what happened to people who had money on Anchor Protocol, which is a DeFi thing. But get your money off the centralized exchanges. Stay safe out there. Smash up that subscribe button. Come talk to me over on the Patreon if you do want to stay up to date with everything that I'm doing, my portfolios, my trades, and just talk to me directly. There is a link down there in my description. Hopefully, I provided you some value today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. A piece from me.